Even in man-made habitats, we can find beautiful underwater worlds. The diversity of species is rarely anything like truly wild places, but we can still appreciate what does live there. I was exploring a vast dammed area of the San Francisco River in Bahia, northeastern Brazil, with my friend Juliana Liloy. Juliana is a Brazilian botanist specializing in aquatic plants, and you can see her adventures on her YouTube channel, Caminhos Desconhecidos, which I'll link in the video description below. The São Francisco River is the principal drainage basin for the huge arid interior of Brazil's northeast and is home to a great diversity of fishes, including the popular aquarium species the Costas tetra, Moncausia costae, and the silver tip tetra, Hasmania nana. Many species of aquatic plants are also found here, although in the waters behind this dam, the fast growing Potomagetan illinoensis dominated. We were filming on a cloudy day but the sluggish waters of the dam meant that there was little suspended sediment, allowing high light penetration, which fuels the aquatic plants. In the margins, submerged grasses and semi-aquatic, sedge-like plants provided cover for small fishes, such as juvenile Astyanax tetras. It was very difficult to confirm the idea of the small kerosene starting about, and even with a quality still photo, you can't truly be sure unless you use an identification key in a lab with a microscope. However, it is likely that these shoals of small fishes included young Astyanax AFF bimaculatus, Hemigrammus marginatus, and possibly Hasmania nana. You can see how the dense cover of plants, twigs, and submerged branches creates an ideal nursery for fishes trying to avoid the predators of the main open water areas. This cover not only provides protection from bigger fishes, but also from the many piscivorous birds found here, either diving species such as cormorants, kingfishers, and terns, or bankside fishes such as herons and egrets. Even spotting prey from above as they zoom through this tangled maze is a challenge. Algae and detritus smothered most of the vegetation and the submerged branches in the shallower areas. This may be due to increased exposure to sunlight. It might not be pretty to an aquascaper's eye, but it's great habitat for the fishes. I moved slowly through the water, sometimes sitting down and trying to be as still as possible, partly to avoid disturbing sediment and detritus and thus clouding the water, and partly so the small fishes wouldn't scatter away from me. In fact, they were very confident, even darting forward to pull on facial hairs, which is not a pleasant sensation. The shallows would taper off into the deeper main channel, creating a sort of drop-off, as is found on the edges of coral reefs. Here, the dense vegetation growing up to the surface gave way to plants growing in deeper water and staying lower. This in-between zone was where we encountered many pike cichlids, Saxatilia brasiliensis. These sleek, fast fishes are omnivorous, eating anything they can find, although aquatic invertebrates and small fishes make up much of their diet. They are typically brave and, as with many cichlids, will come out to defend their eggs and young, flaring and charging and even biting if you don't get the message. I've spent many hours studying several species of pike cichlid and they are one of my favourite families of fishes to observe. They're so engaging. We encountered several other cichlid species here, including Oscar cichlids, Astronotus ocellatus, and the Acara, Cyclosoma santifrancisensi. Other kerosens included Astyanax lacustris, Brychnops sp, Orthospinus franciscensis, and what looked like Piarbucus stramineus. I enjoyed cruising along the divide between the shallow and deep zones, observing the fishes which slipped between cover and open water. Moving out over the tops of the Potomagetan towards deeper water, you suddenly launched out into the open. Ahead of you was the blue-green expanse of the trapped river, and here, larger species roamed. The most obvious bigger fishes were members of the Leperinus family, 
which may have included Leporinus amblyhincus, piao, teniatus, and Megaleporinus obtusidens. Sadly, thanks to irresponsible sports fishermen, the invasive peacock bass, Cicla sp, from the Amazon has been added to this river basin. These voracious predators are decimating native fish populations. Peacock bass follow the shoals of Leporinus through the open water. When hunting, these fish are more likely to adopt an ambush strategy, hiding in the vegetation before launching out at prey. The exotic and invasive peacock bass are such a problem because they breed year-round and strongly defend their eggs and young, meaning they reproduce faster than any other predator and more fry reach adulthood. Additionally, the young are as voracious as the adults, eating absolutely anything that they can fit in their mouths, with a severe impact on ecosystems which have not evolved alongside these predators. In the Amazon basin, the native range of these fish is their movements across river systems are restricted by rapids, bigger predators and turbid waters which they avoid. In other river systems, such as the San Francisco and the Paraguay, they are able to move easily between regions, helped along during the floods of the wet season, which can deposit them in even the smallest streams and leave them stranded during the dry season. Stranded alongside them are the native fishes of these streams, who are easy prey for the fast-moving, big-mouthed peacock bass. Despite strong efforts of conservationists, the sports fishing lobby in Brazil is fighting every step of the way to prevent peacock bass from being removed from habitats where they don't belong. Here you can see two native predators, the piranha Cerasalmus brantai and the dogfish Acestrohincus lacustris. These efficient predators are found in large reservoirs such as this one, where they flourish due to the fact that prey is concentrated in a confined area. I really like the Leporinus amblyrhincus, who to my mind look like giant minnows on steroids with these long beautiful black lateral lines and golden bodies. This plant you can see covering the riverbed is likely Cara AFF rusbiana, a fast-growing species found across a range of habitats. Forming a dense carpet, it provides cover for fishes venturing away from the taller forests of the Potomagedon, such as these Saxatilia brasiliensis, the pike cichlids. Juliano and I encountered other plant species in this reservoir, including Echinodorus sp, Egeria densa, Cabomba aquatica, Pontideria sp, Heteranthera sp, and Utricularia foliosa. Notice how when I get close to this individual pike cichlid, they briefly flare up at me as a warning before deciding that even I'm too big to take on and beat a retreat into the cover of the plants. I really admire how brave these fish are. I have been attacked by smaller pike cichlids than this when defending their young. Brazil is home to a great diversity of pike cichlids, which formerly all belonged to the genus Crenicicla. This has recently been revised, with species placed into separate genera, such as Saxatilia. Pike cichlids can be specialists in hunting other fishes, they can be generalists, they can be snail eaters, and mollusk crunchers, and even algae grazers. Many species have especially adapted jaws and teeth to help them deal with their main food items. This pair of Saxatilia brasiliensis are guarding their fry, who you can just make out as a small cloud of tiny fishes moving around the adults. The parents will herd their young from cover to cover, finding safe spaces for them to graze on algae and detritus and, as they get larger, hunt for tiny aquatic invertebrates amongst the vegetation. I try not to get too close for too long, as I don't want to stress out the adults or their offspring. This adult pike cichlid has offspring nearby and circles around, keeping a watchful eye. I move close but slowly, trying not to appear a threat, and I'm largely ignored. However, a predatory peacock bass is chased off by the brave adult. You can see the half-moon chunk taken out of the tail of this pike cichlid, likely by a fin-nipping piranha. Further upstream, major activity, perhaps from a boat or work taking place along the banks, filled the water with detritus and made it difficult to film. I decided I'd leave this intriguing place for now and return the following day. 